Asset groups are the central elements of your Performance Max campaigns. And in this video, I want to share strategies, methods, learnings that we use here at Cartlift to maximize the revenue and also the ROAS for our clients' Performance Max campaigns, for our e-commerce clients. What you can see here is a fairly old Performance Max campaign over a year at this point. Um, $3.3 million in revenue, 4x ROAS, very profitable for that client, almost a million dollars in spend. So. You can see that if you constantly stay on top of things, if you optimize, test, change asset groups specifically, you can actually have a very consistent performance max campaign that just drives, you know, predictable monthly revenue and profits to your store. And that's exactly what I want to talk about in this video. So. Without any further ado, let's talk about the three topics I want to cover. First of all, I want to explain asset groups in general, how do they work, some misconceptions, but very, very briefly and quickly. Before I then focus on asset group optimization, you know, squeeze more ROAS out of them, more performance, more revenue, and then ultimately also how you can scale them. So it will be very specific and tactical. Let's get started. First of all, let's talk about asset groups in general, just for those of you who don't know, and I want to keep this very short, as I said, Asset groups are essentially the ad groups of a performance max campaign. So you have a performance max campaign at the top, you can have X amount of asset groups, um, and within those asset groups, you can store assets, audiences, and products, or listing groups, as they are called here in this case. So what you can do here is you can organize your performance max campaign sort of by topics, by a bunch of things, as I will, as I will mention in a second. But what's important to know is that an asset group fundamentally stores those three things. You don't have any bidding settings on the asset group level as you have with ad groups, so you cannot change the target ROAS goal on an asset group. You can only define find a target ROAS for the entire performance max campaign. And that's pretty important because it means that you cannot influence or adjust the ad spend really per asset group. With ad groups, you cannot do that either. But since you can change the target of an ad group, right, you can say, okay, ad group one gets a 200% target ROAS and ad group two gets a 500%. You can indirectly influence how much money Google spends on each ad group. But also with normal ad groups, you cannot define the budget itself. What that means is if you want to force ad spend on a product or a category, you need a separate performance max campaign for that product or category, right? So if you have a product uh, in an asset group and it just spends a lot of money and another one um, doesn't spend that much for whatever reason, you cannot really force Google to spend on that. All right, there are two main ways to use asset groups, really. The first is to test audiences, which Google will automatically expand anyway, but you can test multiple seed audiences and then see which one performs the best. Or, and you can split by products or categories. And then of course, what I didn't mention here, but that's very clear, the main sort of thing that you do on the asset group level is actually using assets, right? So those are the two way, the two things that you can test besides of course running assets, different images, different videos, but that's like the fundamental thing. So I didn't really mention that here, but those are the two main things that you can test on the asset group level. Um, all right, let's talk then about asset group optimization. How can you squeeze more performance out of your asset groups. Here you can see another performance max campaign that we um that we work on. It's a, it's not that huge. It spends almost a thousand dollars a day, so not small either. And as you can see here, we have a bunch of asset groups, actually more than those that you can see here. You know, that asset groups make uh, 200 conversions last month, 154, 125, 116, 92, 76. Um, it's producing fairly consistent and solid results. You can see here our ad strength for all of those asset groups is excellent. Now, I don't want to say that this is ultra important, right? But it's some indicator that you are doing like that you're on track, right? So you get a good rating when you have like a mixed set of assets and when you use a bunch of them, etc. In our case, what we do in this particular campaign, at least, is we are testing a whole bunch of different audiences. You can see here, I blurred the images, but you can see that they all look very, very similar because what we do here is we use this almost the same images, slightly different copy adjusted and tailored to those audiences. But you can see also that the performance really changes or differs depending on the um, on the audience right so here for example we have a 1.5x ROAS um, asset group whereas we have a 3.5 or even a 7 there so even by just changing audiences, and I mean, we have statistically significant results, right? 117 conversions, almost 177, and that's just the past 30 days. We have more data than that. 
you can see how massively and drastically performance can change just by having different audiences. Now you might wonder why aren't you removing those here with lower performance? That's some, there is some brand element to that as well. So this brand here is relatively big, um, Shopify plus, you know, uh, eight figure brand, etc. So we still value that. If the performance drops to like, I don't know, 0.8 or something in ROAS, we would absolutely stop it. But for us, that's still okay. Even though of course those here produce way better results. But what you can see, and that's what I mentioned, is you see you can have drastically different performance just by using different audiences. And that's why you really need to take into consideration uh, testing all of those and then throwing them out, testing new ones, essentially breeding the perfect asset groups for your PMAX campaigns. First of all, you should replace underperforming assets though. You don't always get like an asset indication. So if you look into your PMAX campaigns, you sometimes see um, a grading like poor, good, and excellent, I think. It's, or, or no, it's good, best, and poor, I think. That's how they call it, right? Good, best, uh, poor, good, best. I think that's, that's how, they, how they grade it. But not every single account has that. So that's very important. If you have those ratings, you should regularly replace underperforming assets or you should simply refresh those assets. Then you should test new assets regularly if you have some. I will talk later about what to look for in assets, but for now, test new assets regularly if you have more images. If not, I highly recommend, at least if you have the capacity or the budget, to invest in you know, a set of assets that you can test and use, not only for, you know, PMAX, but also for your store, for social media advertising or whatever you do, but that's very important. Replace underperforming assets, then test new assets regularly. You can do that in the same asset group, or if that asset group performs very well, you might want to use a new asset group for that. Then you should test new audiences regularly, even though they use audience expansion. You just saw in the example that I gave you that the audience can make a huge difference, even though Google expands them. So test new audiences regularly as well, especially when you have like, um, you know, a very mass appeal product where you want to find out what's the perfect asset group for it because if you have a very common mass appeal product it's not always that clear right then pause underperforming asset groups because they give you a pretty good indicator you know even though you have like the product and the asset aspect so you have to look under the hood okay how well are the products performing how well are the assets performing but still if you see that an entire asset group isn't performing well at all you should of course pause it so that they are not draining your budget. As I said before, Google just spends the money on all your asset groups and it doesn't really care if it's performing or not. And then you end up in the circle again, you know, replace underperforming assets, test new assets regularly, etc. That's really important. Of course, the most fundamental thing on an asset group level, as I said before, are the assets themselves. And those are what drive the most performance. You can have a slightly underperforming audience, but if you have great assets, it will make up for that. But if you want to test 10 audiences, of course, you can probably not test 10 different sets of completely individual assets for the same product, um, unless you really have like a huge media library, but that's like a first, you know, step, a first thing that you can look at. Try to give each asset group its own distinguished look, right? That's very important. What I mean with that is, well, if you, for example, sell leather backpacks, like one of our clients actually does, and he's pretty successful with it, you can have, for example, a white background themed asset group where you have a bunch of different angles showing the product from different angles, right? You can also have one with like something going on in the background, more of an ambient shot, and then another one with a person wearing it. That really gives the diversity that you need to get the best results from Performance Max. Now, there are a bunch of ways you can structure this. Let's say you have a single ultra successful product. Let's say this one is your ultra successful leather backpack, right? If that's your absolute top number one bestseller that you want to focus on, you want to have one asset group, for example, that's all white background images from different angles, different ad copy, all that kind of things, but only that one product. Then you have another asset group where you have more of these ambient shots, lifestyle, still this one product. And then you have a bunch of images or maybe even a video of people wearing that backpack, right? And you can call it white background, ambient, and 
people or models or whatever you might want to call it, right? That's how you can structure it. Another way, if you have a whole bunch of products, of course, you can mix them a bit more. But that's really, if you want to find out, if you have few products but lots of images, it makes sense to divide asset groups by the asset type. And then you might see, oh, you know, the one with the ambient background works by far the best. And you can pause the white background asset group because it's just not performing. That's one way to go about it. But the point is, don't make the mistake of uploading virtually the same image 10 times just with like a slightly different angle, you know, by five degrees or by having, you know, one slightly from the top and then slightly from the bottom. Sure, that's better than nothing, but still I highly recommend to make them as diverse as possible. And even within the same category, even within the white background category, try to really have completely different angles, showing the product from the inside, from the outside, showing the product like in our case with like all the zippers, opened for example right that's very important when possible though use standard chopping instead of performance max product only i see this all the time that um, especially new prospects new brands that want to work with us they have a large performance max campaign and it's product only the, the thing here is they can perform pretty well. And that's also the issue, right? Because when you have a PMAX campaign producing, I don't know, 100,000 a month in revenue profitably, and it's product only, you cannot really argue with that. But from my experience, a single shopping campaign optimized, maybe multiple uh, shopping campaigns with different priority levels, with n good negative keywords, um, with uh, proper bidding strategies in place, can outperform a Premax product only. Personally, we or, or here at Cartlift, we really like to use Pmax for everything, like assets, audiences, products, and not product only, because we think, and I think, that that's the, really the strength of Pmax. Using it essentially as a shopping campaign in disguise isn't really what it's designed for and I think standard chopping is the better um, it's the better campaign type for that but it can be successful and if you rely on it and it's just producing profitable revenue you might want to stick with it but at least consider the alternative so let's talk about scaling Pmax real quick as well which essentially is done via the asset groups, right? Besides the budget and target that you, that you define on the campaign level. So first of all, you should always increase your daily budget until it no longer spends. Very, very simple. The scaling part is actually a bit simpler than the optimization part, even though they go hand in hand. So if you have a $200 per day budget and you spend it every single day, try 250 or 300. By the way, you don't have to worry too much about the exact amount. I see people all the time, they ask me, hey, should I scale by 5% a day, 10%, whatever? Is there a sweet spot? Not really. I mean, you shouldn't go from $100 a day to, to, to 2000 but going from 200 to three or 400 is no problem at all, right? It just speeds up the process uh, quite a bit. Yes, you might see a hiccup for one or two days potentially, but you don't have to scale in like baby steps all the time. This is just super slow and it's better to have like one big change and then let it run instead of interfering with the campaign every day, for example. Then consider reducing your target ROAS if it's still highly profitable. So if you now spend $300 a day and you um, have a budget of 400 and you don't spend those 400 because you spend 300 every day, that means that increasing your daily budget further doesn't have any effect, right? In that case, you can consider reducing your target ROAS goal if you're still very profitable because reducing your target means Google will spend more and that's effectively scaling. So that's always like a really sort of fine line that um, every case where every case is different. Sometimes it makes more sense to do this or that, but reducing your target ROAS um, further and further to scale while you're still profitable is a relatively easy way to scale your campaign. Then add new asset groups to cover additional products. When you have a PMAX campaign centered around three categories, uh, for some reason you left the other ones out, now it's a good time to add new products as well. Add new categories, add new products, add your second bestseller or something like that to just drive more revenue because that's of course a fairly easy way of scaling too, right? If you had success with the other products, maybe you will have success with those new ones as well. Then expand your audiences for more reach. Again, mentioned that a few times, Google goes beyond your targeting anyway, but I've seen it countless times that we had, like, let's say, three asset groups with three specific audiences. We thought, hey, we cannot scale beyond 500 bucks a day in ad spend. Let's try this bigger audience as well in a separate asset group, for example. 
it picks up a little bit slowly, but once it's a bit optimized, then we see, oh, it can actually get us to $800 a day in ad spend, right? But of course, you need the pockets to be able to do all those things at once and then monitor them and optimize them and scale them all properly. That's not super easy to do, but with larger bigger audiences and the ad spend and conversion data to support that because else you just waste your money in a huge audience. This can help you really scale to the next level as well. And then refresh ad sets, assets to avoid ad fatigue. Because if you think about it, one very important aspect of scaling is having a high click-through rate. And your click-through rate might decrease over time if you don't replace or refresh your assets as long as you're not relying just on search and shopping. Because if you do, then there will be new people all the time anyway searching for your searching for your products but if let's say display discovery plays a huge role in your in your um, performance max campaign so your assets play a huge role then refreshing assets to avoid ad fatigue which will make your click-through rate go down over time is very important and will ultimately help you scale as well. You can imagine having a 3% CTR versus a 1.5% CTR will double your traffic and potentially double your sales, all other things being equal. So that's a nice little step-by-step -step process. Of course, without all the tiny details that go in between, right? There are a million things that you need to look at from your insights tab, your search terms, are you triggering a lot of brand searches? Should you re uh, remove brand, removing products, adding products, uh, measuring the actual performance of individual elements? That's like a whole other story all by itself, but you can really look at those five steps. They will give you and, and they will guide you through the process very, very well already. So I hope that these points were helpful for you. I hope that these strategies made sense for optimization and scaling of your PMAX campaigns and your asset groups. Now, if you want to learn even more or if you want to go the extra mile with your brand, there are two things that I recommend. First of all, you can check cartlift.co where we manage Google ads for e-commerce brands. So if you have an e-commerce brand, make about at least 30, 40,000 a month, ideally, or more, then we can help you really take things to the next level, whether this is through PMAX, whether this is through shopping, search, discovery, you name it, we manage almost a million dollars in monthly ad spend. So we have new learnings virtually every week that we can apply to your account uh, so that you save money, save time, scale quicker, scale more profitably. If you have an e-commerce brand, check that out. Then. If you say, no, I want to do it all myself, I have a Google Ads training completely designed and focused on e-commerce that's up to date with PMAX, with everything. You can find the link in the description as well, the Ecom PPC Academy, where you can learn all that yourself so that you can run better, more profitable campaigns. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, please subscribe for more Google Ads and performance marketing content for e-commerce. And with that being said, thanks a lot for watching and I look forward to see you in the next video again. Bye-bye.